Y me encanta que en la tercera jornada del Mad Cool va a sonar en directo uno de los mejores discos del año pasado, ese Woodstock de la banda que tengo conmigo. Tengo el increíble placer de estar aquí con Eric y con Zach from Portugal. The Is that a good way to introduce you? That was fantastic. Are you enjoying your visit to Madrid? Dude, always, every time. The last time we were here, we, uh, we picked up award at the Los yeah. Muertos Awards. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a wild night. Drank way too much. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, this city just kind of does something. It stirs up the soul and the spirit. So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna party hard tonight. Right. Guys, how is that moment when you go from being a cool indie band to a massive worldwide successful band? <laughs> It's pretty weird. We've been, uh, we've been doing this for a while, and apparently persistence just uh, uh, pays off, you know? We've put out a lot of songs, and it's funny. I mean, I'm 37 years old. I'm from Wasilla, Alaska. <laughs> this is, uh, shit is hilarious. And um, it's, been, it's been fun, man. We've gotten some great opportunities. Um, but it's not, it's not like too bad. It's not too different. We're kind of just doing the same thing. It's just, uh, yeah, when we play... The crowds are a little bigger, and when we play that one song, people go uh, a little crazier. It's been it's been fun to see. I think it's going to take some time off for us to really figure out that perspective, like yeah. how far we've come in this year, because none of us have been able to take a step back and be like, "Whoa, okay, this is crazy." Evil Friends was an amazing album, but all of this has happened with Woodstock. Did you work in a different way with this last album? All of this has happened on purpose. I think so. It was just that we we wrote so many more songs for Woodstock and we threw them all away. We are we are critics ourselves. We are hypercritical of everything that we do. So if we don't have something better, we throw it away or work on it till it gets better. And so I think that was just a lot of it. And then there was just the timing. There was a magic behind it that nobody can predict. Nobody can explain. You can have the most handsome or beautiful human and uh, all the money in the world and a crack team of experts to try to do what that song did and nobody can do that. That's just, you can't plan something like that. It just happens. We made it, we knew it was pretty good, but we had no idea that it was gonna take off like this. Nobody could have known. What I really love about Woodstock is that perfect blend between rock and black music. Do you think it's better to make music when you don't think in genres or labels? Yeah and you are dedicated only to that, to making music. Yeah, the genres don't totally matter anymore. I mean, look at this festival, look at the lineup, this, and how many people come to this. Nobody just likes one style of music, except, you know, Slayer fans or Primus fans. I'm a fan of both those. And, um, but I like, I like everything. And we like seeing, you know, Depeche Mode on one spot, and then Wolf Alice, and. Uh, and you know, Queens of the Stone Age, and us, and Future Islands. It's, nobody sounds the same, but everybody is gonna go watch everybody. And that's scary to do when you're recording an album like that, because you don't want to be, oh, we're just gonna do a little bit of everything and make that old trick. But it was like, like the Beastie Boys, like Check Your Head, I couldn't believe it. Like, listening to Check Your Head, there'll be one, like, super deep hip hop track, then the next one is an instrumental, jazz funk fusion yeah. <laughs> then the next song is like three piece hardcore punk and it's like what the hell is going on here it's <laughs> rad it's like a mixtape that i made for myself and so with woodstock being the title we wanted it to sound like kind of a modern music festival and that's what we were kind of going for when you are in the middle of a huge tour uh, do you take time for yourselves for your family uh, personal matters it's complicated to have a personal life when you are on a successful band? Yeah, I, I haven't unpacked my suitcase since January. And that's <laughs> no joke, I'm dead serious. Uh, we, we just haven't been home. When we are home, we go straight into the studio and we're, we're working on new material because you want to keep the momentum. And I don't think that any of us want to look back at this time of our lives and be like, I wish I would have worked a little harder. I wish I could have taken this opportunity, that opportunity. So the people, like our families and the people that are close to our lives understand that we have this sort of psychotic drive and we, we got to do it. Yeah. Like, you got you to gotta take advantage of the moment. All the world has listened to the album, but how is uh, a Portugal the Man live show? It's a lot different. If you're, uh, if you're expecting 90 minutes to feel it still, it won't be that. <laughs> we do a lot of covers. We have a lot of, 
a lot of fun, especially at music festivals. We specifically do more covers and uh, and medleys, got to blend things together because it's uh, it's it's fun. Yeah, you, know, you got to remember that it's it's not about us. It's just about music. It's not about your band or your genre or anything like that. You know, yeah, there's headliners, but it's just a party, and so you just gotta ride the wave, man. Party with them. Guys, keep rocking. I'm so happy for this success that you are having. Uh, uh, I hope that you have a great future from now on. And thank you for stopping by, being here for this amazing chit chat. And uh, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank out. you, man. That was fun. Part two, Galdeman. <laughs>